friends! Today I will be sharing with you 23 books I want to read in 2023. Let's get started. My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be so much fun because today I will be sharing with you my yearly TBR for 2023, aka 23 books I want to read in 2023. Every single year I do this video and I think it's just such a fun video to make. I love sharing like yearly TBR lists with you guys. And so today I'm just going to be sharing with you all of the books that I am hopefully going to be reading in the next year. But before we get started, Started, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Well, hello there, book lover. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you like to read. And for those of you who like to read, I would love to recommend to you today my very favorite book subscription service, which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a fast-growing online book subscription service. Every month, their team vets hundreds of books to select a curated selection of books ranging from new and emerging authors to popular favorites. Their books range from adult thrillers, contemporaries, nonfiction, fantasy, romance, and even some YA. Just sign in, pick your monthly book or books, and then they're delivered right to your door. Just like magic. And Book of the Month is a completely risk-free service because if there is a month where you are not necessarily vibing with the titles, you can actually do one of two things. You can either choose from their selection of backlist titles, or you can choose to skip the month. And this month, I chose two titles for my selection. The first is What Lies Beneath the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. And this is an adult fantasy horror and thriller. They were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were also liars. And I had to choose this one because Kate Alice Marshall is one of my favorite authors at this point. I absolutely love all of her books. And I can't wait to read this one. And then the last book that I selected for this month was Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, which is the sequel to Ninth House. This is an adult fantasy with dark academia vibes and a sinister edge. Sign me up. And if you would like to try Book of the Month for yourself, you can actually use my code, which is Alexandra. And this code will actually help get your very first book box for only $9.99. All of the links for Book of the Month will be down below. I highly, highly recommend using them, especially if you are an avid book lover like me. Thank you so much to Book of the Month again for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to 23 books to read in 2023. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. And let's start with my top 10 most most anticipated new releases of 2023 that I want to read this year. For this portion of the video, I have my handy dandy laptop. I will be reading off like summaries for all these books because I obviously don't have them. A lot of them haven't come out yet, but let's go ahead and get started. So the very first book that I really want to read of 2023 is going to be A House with Good Bones, and this is by T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher is an author that I discovered this last year in 2022. I read Nettle and Bone and also A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, and I loved both of them. So when I found out that she was coming out with a new release, I had to add it immediately. And listen to this synopsis. It says, a haunting Southern Gothic from an award-winning master of suspense, A House with Good Bones explores the dark, twisted roots lurking just beneath the veneer of a perfect home and family. Literally, I don't need to know anything else. As soon as I read Southern Gothic and Haunted House, I was in, you know? Number two on the list is going to be Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, and I will insert the cover, but I will do so reluctantly because the cover of this is so icky. I do happen to think that the cover artist like really nailed the vibe and did a great job, so I'm not disappointed with the cover. I just can't stand looking at it because it looks like a starved rabbit, and it literally hurts me. <laughs> I won't tell you what this one is about because it is the second book in the like Ninth House series by Lee Bardugo, and I don't want to spoil the first book. But the first book is Dark Academia Vibes. We're following Alex, who is accepted into Yale University on the contingency that she is kind of part of a secret society. It's not really a secret society. It's more like she is part of the police of the secret society. She has to keep ghosts at bay because all of these secret societies 
perform a lot of rituals and a lot of ghosts come about, but also she kind of has to keep all of the secret societies like in check. We're following her journey at Gale in this secret society slash like accountability for the other secret societies. And we're learning about her relationship seeing ghosts. And it is very, very interesting. I feel like I didn't vibe with this book until the last section of it. But at the end of Ninth House, I ended up really, really loving it. And I loved what Lee Bardugo did. And so I really, really want to pick up the second book in the series. The next book is a book that actually was brought to my attention by one of my Patreons. And that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And this is by Heather Fawcett. So it says Cambridge professor Emily Wilde is good at many things. She is the foremost expert on the study of fairies. She is a genius scholar and meticulous researcher who is writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore. But Emily Wilde is not good at people. She could never make small talk at a party or even get invited to one. And she refers to the company of her books. Same. Okay, same. So when she arrives in the hard scrabble village of I don't know how to say that word. Okay. Emily has no intention of befriending the gruff townsfolk, nor does she care to spend time with another new arrival, her dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival. Oh my God. I didn't realize that there were academic rivals in this. I just heard fairies and like was sold. This sounds so but as Emily gets closer and closer to uncovering the secrets of the Hidden Ones, the most elusive of all fairies lurking in the shadowy forest outside of town, she also finds herself on the trail of another mystery. Who is Wendell and what does he really want? And um, that's her academic rival. <laughs> So I'm into it. I'm also planning on making this a Patreon selection in the second half of the year. I wanted to make it a Patreon selection in the first half, but I didn't want to add too many new releases because I know some people prefer doing backlist titles. So uh, this is definitely one we will be reading at my Patreon later on. The next book is Happy Place by Emily Henry. Okay, so Emily Henry is actually an adult romance author and I love her work so much. I think my favorite thing that she has written so far was the people we meet on vacation, but I've enjoyed all of her works. And so when I found out she was coming out with another adult romance, I was immediately sold. And all I know about this is that this is about a couple who used to date, but then they broke up and then they are invited back. I want to say, yeah, for a week long vacation with their best friends. And they have to pretend that they're still together because they don't want to tell anyone that they broke up. Next up is The Stolen Heir by Holly Black. And listen, I did not even bother reading the synopsis for this one. I saw that Holly Black was coming out with a new dark fairy fantasy series. And I immediately was like, say less. I loved The Cruel Prince. I think I'm going to love this one. And I'm intentionally not reading the synopsis for this one because I don't want to know anything going into this book. But if you love dark fantasy and you love fairies and you love like twisty romances, check out Holly Black. The next one is The Villa and this is by Rachel Hawkins. Rachel Hawkins has come up with so many really, really good and well-reviewed thrillers recently. And this one sounds incredible and it's kind of giving me like Daisy Jones vibes, but in a thriller. And I love that so much. So it says the best-selling author of The Wife Upstairs returns with a brilliant new Gothic suspense set at an Italian villa with dark history. Inspired by Fleetwood Mac, The Manson Murders, and the infamous summer Percy and Mary Shelley spent with Lord Byron, the villa welcomes you into its deadly legacy. We're following two different perspectives. One is of two old childhood friends, and then the other is like a group of people who experienced a murder in the 70s. The two stories end up intertwining at this Italian villa. That's all I know. It sounds really, really good and I am loving the vibes. Next is In the Lives of Puppets and this is by TJ Klune. You know I love this author and I love his writing because when else would I read about creepy puppets, you know? This book apparently is supposed to be a Pinocchio retelling and I'm very, very intrigued. It says, in a strange little home built into the branches of the grove of trees, live three robots, fatherly inventor Giovanni, a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine, and a small vacuum desperate for love and attention. This sounds so cute. Victor Lawson, a human lives there too. They're a family hidden and safe. But when Hap unwittingly alerts robots from Gio's former life to their whereabouts, the family is no longer hidden and safe. Gio is captured and taken back to his old laboratory in the city of electric dreams. So together, the rest of Vic's assembled family must journey across 
across an unforgiving and otherworldly country to rescue Geo. So it sounds really cute because it sounds kind of like a family of robots and they're trying to reunite. I think there's a little bit of like a romance in here. I'm pretty sure it's LGBTQ plus because all of TJ Klune's writings are LGBTQ plus and I'm just very excited. I felt like The House on the Cerulean Sea was one of the most beautiful stories I've ever read in my entire life and I have a lot of faith in this author's cozy like approach to fantasy. So I'm really really excited to read this. It sounds like the perfect blend between sci-fi and fantasy and I can't wait to see what he does with robot love. So the next book is going to be the next and newest novella in Shauna McGuire's Every Heart a Doorway series or the Wayward Children series. And that book is going to be Lost in the Moment and Found. I read these new novellas every single year and every single year they bring me so much joy. Without a doubt, this is probably going to make my top 10 list because every single one of her books in this novella series has made my top 10 list since I first started picking them up. So this one says, a young girl discovers an infinite variety variety of worlds in this standalone tale in the Hugo and Nebula award-winning Wayward Children series. Welcome to the shop where the lost things go. If you've ever lost a sock, you'll find it here. If you've ever wondered about your favorite toy from childhood, it's probably sitting on a shelf in the back. And the headphones that you swore that this time you'd keep safe, you guessed it, it's here. Antoinette has lost her father, metaphorically. He's not in the shop and she'll never see him again. But when Antsy finds herself lost, literally this time, she finds that however many doors open for her, leaving the shop for good might not be as simple as it sounds. Number nine on the list is going to be Silverborn, and this is by Jessica Townsend, and this is a middle grade. This is the fourth book in the Nevermore series, and Nevermore, I am convinced, my refrigerator is freaking me out. <laughs> Anyways, like I was saying, this is the fourth book in the Nevermore series, and I am convinced that Nevermore is actually my favorite middle grade of all time. It just makes me so happy. As this is the fourth book in the series, I won't tell you what this one is about, but the series itself is following Morgan Crow, who was a girl who tries to join this magical secret society called the Wondrous Society. Does she get in? Does she not? I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna tell you. And then finally, my last anticipated book release that I wanna mention, there's always going to be more. Like inevitably, I will find out about more halfway through the year, but this is the last one that I know of that I really, really wanna read, and that is The Mimicking of Known Successes. And I actually saw this one on a Today book list list, and I can link it down below, but I'll just read you what it says because it was super, super intriguing. So this says, exploring communities in conflict and the loss of ecosystems, this science fiction novella, part sapphic romance, part murder mystery, imagines what life would be like in a human colony on Jupiter. So yeah, that is the last one that I want to read from my anticipated releases. Now let's go ahead and go to backlist titles. Okay, so my first backlist title that I would like to read in 2023 is Keeper of Enchanted Rooms. It is on Kindle Unlimited if you are interested. And this particular book is actually the very first book that I'm reading with my Patreons over at my Patreon called Fox and Wood for the year. It sounds so incredible incredibly quaint and charming. It's a cozy fantasy and also a cozy mystery and we're following Holda and Merritt. And Merritt has actually just inherited a house and when he goes to the house, he finds out that the house is haunted or enchanted and he ends up meeting Holda who works for an institution that preserves magical houses and locations and she's kind of guiding him through how to navigate owning an enchanted and magical house and the magical house will not let Merritt leave. It's very very quaint. I've actually just started this. It's really, really funny so far, and it's really, really, really cute. And I'm excited to finish it and report back, but I think it's going to be a pretty high star rating. The next book I have is Once Upon a River, and this is by Diane Setterfield, I believe. I've heard so many incredible things about this book over the years. I'm going to read the back because I don't really want to butcher the synopsis of this one, and it's a little bit more complicated. On a dark midwinter's night in an ancient inn on the river, an extraordinary event takes place. The regulars are telling stories to while away the dark hours when the door bursts open to reveal a grievously wounded stranger. In his arms is the life 
lifeless body of a small girl. Hours later, the girl stirs, takes a breath, and returns to life. Is it a miracle or is it magic? So I think the book itself is kind of exploring this girl's mystery and her past, but I've heard that it's very lyrical and lush and just beautifully written. So I'm really, really excited to read it. I have been a little intimidated by this book in the past, but I think this is the year that I'm finally going to get to it. The next book is a book that has been on so many people's best books of the year and also so many people have been raving about and that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold and this is by Toshika Kawaguchi. And this is, I believe, a Japanese translated work of fiction. And all I know about this is that it's about a cozy little cafe in Tokyo. And this cafe is actually kind of magical because you can actually go back in time. But the caveat to this rule is that you can only go back until your coffee gets cold. Once your coffee gets cold, I don't think you can return. The next book is a book that I actually have seen throughout the years, but only really struck my interest after I found a book talk creator named Dakota who was absolutely in love with this series and was constantly making TikToks about it. And that is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. And all I know about this is that it's about two best friends who live in Naples, Italy, and we're following their friendship throughout the years. The way Dakota has described it is this is kind of the perfect portrait of girlhood and of friendship growing up. And I've heard that this is extremely touching and emotional. This particular series, which was translated from Italian, has sold so many copies worldwide. And so many people absolutely love this series. And again, it's one of those book series that I think was a little bit intimidating for me. So even though I'm a little intimidated by it, I think this is the year I'm going to try reading book one of the Neapolitan Quartet. The next book is arguably the most intimidating book on this particular list for me, and that is Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. This book was on 22 books to read in 2022, and uh, <laughs> spoilers, I didn't read it. I absolutely love magical realism. I read a magical realism book last year, The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina, and that was in my top 10 books of the year. And in every single one of my favorite books of the year, I include a magical realism title because I love magical realism. And that's why I can't seem to bring myself to read this because Gabriel Garcia Marquez is actually considered like a founding father of magical realism. I'm just terrified that I'm going to read this and I'm going to hate it. I think I'm putting too many expectations on this and on myself and I just need to read it. And if I don't like it, it's okay. And if I love it, it's okay. But this has to be the year that I read it, you know? And and this particular book is following generations in a family and their daily struggles, but it incorporates a lot of magical realism and a lot of the themes of magical realism. So we've got like anti-colonialism in here. We've got lots of depictions of wars and of, you know, a lot of tragic times as well as like a family coming together over the years. So I'm really, really excited to see what happens in this book, but I'm also quite intimidated if I'm being honest. The next book is another book that is a little intimidating and that is The Iliad. And this is by Homer. I'm intimidated by this book, but I was enjoying reading it when I was reading it and I was annotating it. So my goal for this year is to read it and to annotate it because I love Greek mythology. This particular book is following the characters in the later half or the later portion of the Trojan War. This book has been around for a while and there are so many different translations of this book. I have the one translated by Peter Green. Next up is a book that has been on so many yearly TBR and seasonal fall TBRs that it's embarrassing. <laughs> Am I ever gonna read Frankenstein? I don't know. I have actually tried reading Frankenstein in the past, but it's just so slow that I think it's very, very intimidating to me and I'm afraid I'm not gonna like it, but I really, really want to love it. And that's why I keep putting it off because I actually keep starting it and then I keep stopping it. But I think think if I can just get through some of the slower beginning sections of Frankenstein, I am going to love it. So I really hope that this is the year that I read Frankenstein. And then the next classic, and I think the last classic that I have is a bit of a brick, and that is Anna Karenina, and this is by Leo Tolstoy. Again, sort of like the Iliad, I was reading this and loving it, but I was really, really enjoying it. I just ended up putting it down because it is quite chunky and thick. So this is quite the time commitment. And Anna Karenina is a Russian classic, again, by Leo Tolstoy. It's all about the repercussions of an affair that is started by Anna Karenina and this young Russian soldier. And then the final two backlist 
titles are books that I actually don't have and I need to purchase or borrow. The first one is Sword Heart and this is by T. King Fisher. Again, I love T. King Fisher and I've heard so many excellent things about this book. It says, Hala is a housekeeper who has suddenly inherited her great uncle's estate. Sarkis is an immortal swordsman trapped in a prison of enchanted steel. When Hala draws the sword that imprisons him, Sarkis finds himself attempting to defend his new wielder against everything from bandits and roving inquisitors to her own in-laws. It sounds really, really perfect between kind of like a quirky and charming tale and fantasy, which I feel T. Kingfisher does really, really well. And then the final book is actually a book that one of my YouTube besties, Liv from Olivia Reads a Latte, has been telling me she thinks I'm going to love, and that is A Curious Beginning. So this is London. 1887. After burying her spinster aunt, orphaned Veronica Speedwell, is free to resume her world travels in pursuit of scientific inquiry and the occasional romantic affair. As familiar with hunting butterflies as with fending off admirers, Veronica intends to embark upon the journey of a lifetime. But fate has other plans when Veronica thwarts her own attempted abduction with the help of an enigmatic German baron who offers her sanctuary in the care of his friend Stoker, a recluse and bad-tempered natural historian. But before the Baron can reveal what he knows of the plot against her, he is found murdered, leaving Veronica and Stoker on the run from an elusive assailant as wary partners in search of villainous truth. Those are all of the books. My last category is going to be genres, and I do wanna explore three different genres more at length in 2023. The first one is I would like to explore cozy mysteries more. I actually wanna do a dedicated vlog or two on this. The next genre that I would like to try exploring a little bit more is actually adult high fantasy. I really, really love Mistborn the year that I read that, which I think was two years ago, but I never continued on in the series, and I really, really wanna explore Mistborn, as well as other Brandon Sanderson books more. I really, really want to read The Way of Kings. I also think I might want to read Lord of the Rings this year, as well as Game of Thrones. And then finally, the last genre that I would like to explore even more in 2023 is going to be reading more mystery thrillers. So I know I said earlier that I wanted to read more cozy mystery, but in general, I think I actually really like horror and thrillers a lot. And so in 2023, I want to reach for more horror horrors and more thrillers. There's just something about reading a really, really good thriller that gets you like, I don't know, super, super distracted and engrossed in the story. There's nothing like it, you know? And I think you guys, that is it. Those are all of the books and genres that I want to read or attempt to read in 2023. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to hear from you guys though. What is your top number one book that you wanna read this year? Please leave me a comment down below letting me know. And also, if you have made it to this portion of the video, please leave me a stack of books, you know, symbolizing the yearly TBR. I'd also like to thank Book of the Month again for sponsoring this video. I highly recommend checking them out. All of the links and codes will be down in the description. And a huge, huge thank you to all of my Patreons over on Fox and Wood. I love all of you so very, very much. Thank you so much for supporting me and my dreams and my channel. And a huge, huge thank you specifically to the executive producers of this video. All of your names will be down below in my description. And I think that's it. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will chat with you very soon. Bye!